out of the house of bondage. Thou shalt not have no other gods before me. Thou shalt not make unto thee any graven image or any likeness or anything that is in the heaven above, all that is in the earth beneath, all that is in the water under the earth. Thou shalt not bow down thyself to them, nor serve them, for the, I am the Lord thy God, and am a jealous God. This is the iniquities of the Father upon the children under the third and the fourth generation of them that hate me, and showing mercy unto the thousands of them that love me and keep my commandments. Thou shalt not take the name of the Lord thy God in vain, for the Lord will not hold him guiltless that take his name in vain. Remember the Sabbath day and keep it holy. Six days shall thy labor and do all thy work, but the Sabbath day is the Sabbath of the Lord thy God. In it thou shalt not do any work, thou, nor thy son, nor thy daughter, nor thy manservant, nor thy maidservant, nor thy cattle, nor the stranger within thy gate. For in the six days the Lord made the heaven and the earth and the sea and all that is in them. And then rested in the seventh day. Wherefore the Lord blessed and blessed the Sabbath day and hallowed it. Honor thy father and thy mother that the days may be long upon the land which the Lord thy God give thee. Thou shalt not kill. Thou shalt not commit adultery. Thou shalt not steal. Thou shalt not bear false witness against thy neighbor. Thou shalt not cover thy neighbor's house. Thou shalt not cover thy neighbor's wife. Nor his manservant, nor his maidservant, nor his ox, nor his ass, or anything that is thy neighbor. In the Lord God Jesus' name we pray, amen. Amen. First and foremost, we always like to give praise and honor to the God of Israel, which is Jesus, for letting us come out here on another Sabbath day. We're here on the seventh day of the week, not the first day of the week. We always like to emphasize that because the world is blind to that. So we're going to get right to this lesson. We're going to give you the title of the lesson. Um, the title is The God, The God of Choices. The God of Choices. And the reason why I titled this lesson The God of Choices is because there are so many distractions in the world and we have to make a choice on whether we're going to serve the Lord or serve the world. But God wants us to know the difference between the two because some of these choices are very, very similar to his. And there are counterfeits in the world. But God wants us to make sure that we are able to get in his kingdom by keeping his laws, his statutes. And the world going to come at you like you're doing something wrong by not following their custom, their laws. So you got to make sure that we understand how to make the correct choice. Close it. We got to make sure that we make the correct choice. And this is what this Bible study is about, just showing you the different choices in the world that you're gonna come up against. And believe me, if you ain't strong enough, your family member will turn you, your loved one will turn you. Because they are not following these, well, I ain't gonna say they are not, but most of them, they're not following this, this book. And we got to have this book to show them where they're going wrong. So we're gonna start in Deuteronomy chapter 30. In verse 15, and this is the God of choices. He gives us all these choices. He allows these choices to come to pass. Because there's nothing that's done under the sun that God's not allowed. Deuteronomy chapter 30, we're going to start with verse 15. So let's break these choices down. You get it, brother? Go ahead. See, I have set before thee this day life and good, and death and evil, and that I command thee this day to love the Lord thy God, yes, sir. to walk in his ways, and to keep his commandments and his statutes, and his judgments, that thou mayest live and multiply. Uh -huh. And the Lord thy God shall bless thee in the land whither thou goest to possess it. Now the Lord said right off hand, he said, I have set life and good and death and evil. He started with these choices. So we got to know what is life, what is good, and what is evil. So we can be on his side. He already told us in the next verse, if you love the Lord, you'll keep his commandments. That's life. Go ahead. Verse 17. But if thine heart turn away, so that thou wilt not hear, but shall be drawn away, and worship other gods, and serve them, 
I denounce unto you this day that you shall surely perish. You see what he says, people? See what he said? He said, if your heart, meaning your mind, is turned away and let these people draw you, you're being drawn. That's why your mind got to be so focused on what the word of the Lord is so you won't be drawn by your loved ones or the ones that you respect so much. If you don't understand what thus says the Lord, you won't understand his judgments. So therefore, they will draw you with these other gods. When he means other gods, he's talking about the God of Christmas, the God of Thanksgiving, the Valentine Day God, the Mother Day God, all these gods that are not written in the book. If you can't find it in the book, that's another god. If we can find it in the book, I'd be the first one to celebrate it with you. Let's get it. But we can't find it. So we got to know the difference between the God of Israel and his laws and the God of this world and their laws and customs. Read verse 17 again. Deuteronomy chapter 30, we have verse 17. Go ahead. But if thy heart turn away, so that thou wilt not hear, but shall be drawn away and worship other gods and serve them. Yes, sir. I denounce unto you this day mm -hmm. that ye shall surely perish. Now God is making a decree. He said, I denounce you this day, you shall surely perish. And people think, well, God said, well, I wouldn't celebrate Christmas last year. I ain't perish. He gave me time, brother. He gave me time, sister, to repent. That's what he giving you. Give you a little grace here. Because he's going to make sure that you know this you make sure that everybody here is true before he can put judgment on us. Go ahead. I denounce unto you this day that ye shall surely perish, and that ye shall not prolong your days upon the land, mm -hmm. whether thou passest over Jordan to go to possess it. Now I understand he's talking to a particular set of people. That, that's the Israelites. These are the laws and statutes he told us to take into the land. So we won't perish. Because he knew we're going into the land, we're going to have all kind of pagan worship. All kind of other God worship. We supposed to went into the land and show them the light. But we went into the land and followed their gods. Go ahead. 19. I call heaven and earth to record this day against you. Yes, sir. That I have set before you life and death. Yes, sir. Blessing and cursing. Therefore, choose life. That both thou and thy seed may live. You see what he said? Those are all these choices. Life and death. Death. Blessing and cursing. He said, therefore, choose life. And also, check this out. He said, but thou and thou seed may live. Talking about your children. That's the greatest thing a father and mother can do is give life to their kids. Amen. Show them the life. But if you ain't showing them the life of God, you show them the death of the world. They're going to die in it. But this is what, like I said, these are the God of choice. God put these on the table. He's not going to have us like a robot. He won't know if you genuinely love him. Like you're going to genuinely choose him. Or you're going to genuinely choose death. Choose death. He want to make sure that when he gives us our heavenly body that, oh, that's my son. I know he's going to do the right thing. That's my daughter. I know she's going to do the right thing. He's not going to give you this power that he's going to give us in the resurrection if your mind ain't right. It's on other gods. It's on the world's things. He's not going to do that. So check your mind. Go ahead. Verse 20. That thou mayest love the Lord thy God, and that thou mayest obey his voice, yes, sir. and that thou, thou mayest cleave unto him, mm -hmm. for he is thy life, and the length of thy days, that thou mayest dwell in the land which the Lord swear unto thy fathers, to Abraham, to Isaac, and to Jacob, to give them. These are the forefathers he swore unto them. Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. Those are the Israelites that he gave these laws to so we would have length of days, prosperous, all these things. And we're supposed to teach our seed, teach our children, as well as the other nations. But if we don't know the choices, we're going to have stuff go wrong with us, like we have in today. Getting shot in the streets, last hour, first fire. They look at you like you're going to steal something. They're looking like you're like you going to hurt them. Clutching the purse when you walk by, locking the doors. This is how they look at us because we are people do not, who are not governed by a law. You finish with that? Yes, sir. Let's get a little more detail on these choices. Let's go to Jeremiah chapter 44. Now, this day, this day and time, the choices that the devil put out there, 
Oh, he looked real prosperous. You had a lot of fun. That's what people don't understand. The devil don't give you all the way back. He said he's a tree of the knowledge of good and evil. He gonna give you some good. Well, let's see what Israel done once they went to the land. Our people, if you don't know who the Israelites are, that's you. If you are so-called African American, or Negro, or color, or whatever way you want to put it, all them little, little uh, nicknames they give us. Jeremiah chapter 44, we're going to start with verse 1. Let's see what choice did Israel choose. Go ahead. The word that came to Jeremiah concerning all the Jews which dwell in the land of Egypt, which dwell at Migdal, and at Tapanes, and at Noth, and in the country of Pathros, saying, Thus saith the Lord of hosts, the God of Israel, mm -hmm. ye have seen all the evil that I have brought upon Jerusalem, and upon all the cities of Judah. And behold, this day they are in desolation, and no man dwelleth therein. God said, you seen what I did to Egypt when I brought y'all out of slavery, what I've done to them. He gave us a law, a set of laws to follow so we can be blessed with him. Y'all seen this, but Israel turned their backs on God. Go ahead. Verse 3, because of their wickedness, which, have, which they have committed to provoke me to anger, mm -hmm. and that they went to burn incense yes, sir. and to serve other gods. Whom they knew not, neither they, ye, nor your fathers. This, this is what they done. These are the choices that they made. They went to burn incense. Incense, a thing came to me this morning about sage. You got people here burning sage inside their house. That is a pagan ritual. That is, they have nothing to do with God. Go look it up yourself. Talk about they warring off evil spirits. Only God can war off evil spirits. He ain't told us a brand no doing them. He said the war off evil spirits. Find it in the book. He said they provoke him and they serve other gods. Go ahead. Whom they knew not, neither they, you, nor your fathers. We don't know nothing about the God of Thanksgiving. We don't know nothing about the God of Christmas. We don't know nothing about the God of Easter. Not the, my forefather, Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. We know about the God of Passover, Feast of Living Bread, and Day of Atonement. Those are the things that God says, sir. Those are the God of Israel choices. For Israel, as we see, they say, forget that. Go ahead. Verse 4. How be it I sent unto you all my servants, the prophets. Yes, sir. Rising early and sending them, saying, Oh, do not this abominable thing that I hate. He said, Don't do this abominable thing that I hate. He hated when you go against his law and go serve somebody else. Holiday. He wants you to serve his holy day. Amen. He said, I hate this. Go ahead. Verse 5. But they hearken not, nor incline their ear to turn from their wickedness. Yes, sir. To burn no incense unto other gods. Because you got a lot of people who you think they got ears to hear, but they ain't listening. They didn't incline, meaning that you didn't take it in. You just was up here as a body just sitting here. When you incline your ear, that means, that, okay, let me find out what's going on. Let me study this. Let me, let me see what it is. But you're like, oh, well, okay. Don't even give it a thought. That ain't going to help you. That ain't going to help me. Incline your ear. Get into it. So God can look in your brain and say, oh, they are actually listening. I can bless them. Go ahead. Verse 6. Wherefore my fury and my anger was poured forth. Wait a minute. Did the Lord get mad now? Yes, sir. This God, now he get mad. When he get mad, he started killing folk. Mm -hmm. These are the choices that the Israelites made. Go ahead. Wherefore my fury and my anger was poured forth and was kindled in the cities of Judah and in the streets of Jerusalem. Yes, sir. And they are wasted and desolate as at this day. We know by this day they happened in 7 AD. That's the last time Israel was a nation, 7 AD. God destroyed it to the ground, destroyed the temple. Israelites ran into Egypt, just trying to escape their uh, slave master coming, but they couldn't. The Egyptians sold us out. So it wasn't like you see black slave, Hebrew selling Hebrew. No, they were African selling Israelites. We the same color, same hair texture. But this is about how we know our history, so we won't repeat it. Go ahead. Verse 7. Therefore now thus saith the Lord, the God of hosts, 
the God of Israel. Wherefore commit ye this great evil against your souls yes, sir. to cut out from you man and woman, child and suckling, out of Judah, to leave you none to remain. It don't just affect you. It affect your woman and your children. You got to pass it down to them just in case you die out. They have something to fight Satan with. These are the choices that you got to put on the table to your family. If you're a husband, your wife, your kids. You got to put this on the table so when you die or something happens to you, they got it. They can move on. They're not waiting on you. But if you somebody out there want to have fun, 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 make people laugh all the time, never give them no book, they have no defense against Satan. And he coming. Go ahead. Verse 8. In that ye provoke me unto wrath with the works of your hands. Yes, sir. Burning incense unto other gods in the land of Egypt, whither ye be gone to dwell. Mm -hmm. That ye might cut yourselves off, and that ye might be a curse and a reproach among all the nations of the earth. Ain't we a curse and a reproach to all the nations? How they look it up? Do they say, oh, that's a very understanding people? They're looking at them, them niggas. <laughs> Crazy. They're always into something. But this is what God said, he's going to cut us off because we, he going to provoke, we provoke him to anger. We provoke him so he had to put this curse on us. And we know that curse in Deuteronomy chapter 28. Read it. If you're Israelite. Read what your history is. Go ahead. Verse 9. Have you forgotten the wickedness of your fathers? Yeah, they don't forgot. Still today, they don't forgot the wickedness of our fathers because nobody goes back to the Old Testament to read in the sign of churches. You know what they say? We New Testament church. They're done away with. No, it's the same book. You just ain't read it. What do you think they were referring to? They were referring to the Old Testament. Go ahead. Have you forgotten the wickedness of your fathers and the wickedness of the kings of Judah? Yes, sir. And the wickedness of their wives and your own wickedness and the wickedness of your wives and the wickedness of your wives, which they have committed in the land of Judah and in the streets of Jerusalem. See, we have to understand the wickedness of our people so we won't repeat it. He covered everybody, from the men, the wives, everybody were wicked at this time. And what they was doing there, they was, they was celebrating the queen of heaven, making cakes. And you got many queens of heaven out here, a lot of them. You got the queen of heaven on Mother's Day. You got the queen of heaven, the goddess of harvest, which is Thanksgiving. You got a lot of queens of heaven. You just got to go do some research. Because it ain't written in, that, in our book like Thanksgiving. Where is that? <laughs> Go ahead, brother. Verse 10. They are not humbled even unto this day. Mm -hmm. Neither have they feared, nor walked in my law, nor in my statutes that I set before you and before your fathers. Is Israel humble today? I'll be very humble. We do this stuff proudly. We sin proudly. You can tell them, man, that's evil. God don't like that. He don't like you put that Christmas tree in your house. They're going to put it up anyway. We're going to praise them anyway. There ain't no humbleness at all. But the pain coming. Go ahead. Skip down verse 12. Yeah, skip down to verse 12. Go ahead. And I will take the remnant of Judah that have set their faces to go into the land of Egypt to sojourn there. Yes, sir. And they shall all be consumed and fall in the land of Egypt. Mm -hmm. They shall even be consumed by the sword and by the famine. They shall die from the least even unto the greatest by the sword and by the famine, and they shall be an execration and an astonishment and a curse and a reproach. A great example of that, read the history of 7 AD when they came, when Titus came to Jerusalem and sat Jerusalem, burned it to the ground. That's the last time we can read, well, that's the last time in history that we was a nation. And curse will put on us. Go ahead. 13. For I will punish them that dwell in the land of Egypt, as I have punished Jerusalem, by the sword, by the famine, and by the pestilence. You see what he says there? These are the choices that we made as a nation. Did it trickle down to our kids? Our kids' kids. And now we are here today because of the choices. We didn't choose the God of Israel. We choose the gods of these other people. So this is lesson to put together to let you see what your choice is. So you'll make the right choice. Go ahead. 14. So that none of the remnant of Judah, which are gone into the land of Egypt to sojourn there, shall escape or remain, that they should return into the land of Judah, to the which they have a desire to return to dwell there. 
for none shall return, but such as shall escape. We ain't returning now yet. If you return now, you visit them, they don't look at you like you are the people of the land. Go ahead. Then all the men. Oh man, go ahead. Then all the men which knew that their wives had burned incense unto other gods, and all the women that stood by, a great multitude, even all the people that dwelt. Tell in this man. Even all the people. You are a leader in your household. He said all the men stood there and looked at their wives do this. They didn't correct them. Celebrating these other gods. This is what these men were doing. We need not the men stars with the man. You got to set the tone in your house. As for me and my house, we're going to praise the Lord. We ain't praising these other gods. You have to check people. And it's going to hurt some of your loved ones when you say that stuff because they got grandma now, they got grandpa now, and they like, man, you're going to make them sad if you don't come over and eat some of this turkey dressing. I said, I need turkey dressing in the day. You ain't got to be on Thanksgiving, Christmas, whatever it is. Now, I'm going to serve God to Israel. I'll get it with y'all later. I'm not sitting at that table. Go ahead. 15. Then all the men which knew that their wives had burned incense unto other gods, yes, and all the women that stood by, a great multitude, even all the people that dwelt in the land of Egypt in Pathros, as Sir Jeremiah said. Look what they said now. See if this don't echo to your for, for what we tell people. Go ahead. As for the word that thou hast spoken unto us in the name of the Lord, we will not hearken unto thee. We ain't gonna do that, man. When you get this from, you stuck in the past. We a New Testament church. We got Christmas celebrate Jesus Christ's birthday. I said, show me the birth certificate in the Bible. When is it? When they say his birth is on December twenty fifth? Where's the birth certificate of any prophet in the Bible? What do you get that from? You got it from another God. I start taking that son to moves. Nimrod. All that stems from them. These are the gods. Go ahead. 17. But we will certainly do whatsoever thing going forth out of our own mouth to burn incense unto the queen of heaven. Don't that sound like Israel? We don't do what we want to do anyway. We're going to eat. We're going to have food. Look at all this food we got. We're going to eat. They're going to talk about this food right here. Go ahead. And to pour out drink offerings unto her. We got liquor. We got everything. Go ahead. As we have done, we and our fathers, our kings, and our princes in the cities of Judah and in the streets of Jerusalem. Yes, sir. For then had we plenty of victuals and were well and saw no evil. See, he said, then we had plenty of food. That way Israel get it messed up. And just because you have a lot of food, that don't mean God bless you. Whoever got the food, Israel now. Put up and put a grill out. Somebody gonna stop. You better make sure what they serving on that grill is right. You better figure out what they serving it for. These are choices that we got to make. And God said, I'm gonna put all these choices on the table. I'm gonna set them for you. I'm gonna see what you're gonna do. Because he don't want no robots. He wants you to serve him with all your heart, with all your mind. Heart and mind the same thing. This is what he wants us to do. Go ahead. Verse 18. But since we left off to burn incense to the queen of heaven and to pour out drink offerings unto her, we have won in all things and have been consumed by the sword and by the famine. This is what happened to us. Since we want to serve the other gods, I'm just, the queen of heaven, just one God they serve right here and they burn the incense. We got, they got a plethora of gods around here today that they serve. But we got to understand who we are choosing you burning sage in your house. That stuff is evil. Incense. You got a boot over there on the side. Chant to them. That stuff is evil. That's another God. Jump down to verse 22. Go ahead. So that the Lord could no longer bear because of the evil of your doings. And Lord, because Lord said, I can't bear it no more. I got to do something to y'all. I can't bear it no more. Go ahead. So that the Lord could, not long, could no longer bear mm -hmm. because of the evil of your doings. And because of the abominations which ye have committed. Yes, sir. Therefore is your land a desolation and an astonishment and a curse without an inhabitant as at this day. As at this day. And our land abomination. Because they put every abominable thing out there. They got abominable food. They got ham, crab, shrimp, and all that on the table. They said we doing this all in the name of Jesus. That's abominable. He hates that. We got to drag a Christmas tree in the house and decorate it saying that we're going to celebrate Christ. 
That's an abomination. That's an idol. He hates that. Go ahead. Because ye have burned incense, and because ye have sinned against the Lord, and have not obeyed the voice of the Lord, nor walked in his law, nor in his statutes, nor in his testimonies. Therefore, this evil is happening unto you as at this day. Now, you know why you got evil in your house? It's still this thing right here he's talking about. It's present. This Bible written from the past, present, future. It got it all. It's still rolling. This is what he tells us. Go ahead. Verse 24. Moreover, Jeremiah said unto all the people and to all the women, Hear the word of the Lord, all Judah that are in the land of Egypt. Thus said the Lord of hosts, the God of Israel, saying, Ye and your wives have both spoken with your mouths mm -hmm. and fulfilled with your hands, saying, mm -hmm. We will surely perform our vows that we have vowed mm -hmm. to burn incense to the queen of heaven and to pour out drink offerings unto her. Mm -hmm. Ye will surely accomplish your vows and surely perform your vows. We surely don't have that turkey and that dressing on Thanksgiving. And, my, and, and your wife going to make it. Cakes, pies, everything. This is what they do on their holidays. Where it come from? Can you read out the book? This is the season that we got to be real careful about. Season because we are trapped up in this world. God said, be in the world, but not other world. We can't be sitting at these people's table now. You can't sit at the Lord's table and sit at, <laughs> sit, sit at Satan's table too now. These are choices that we got to make. And like I say, in many queens of heaven, you just got to do your research. Go ahead. Verse 26. Therefore hear the word of the Lord, all Judah that dwell in the land of Egypt. Mm -hmm. Behold, I have sworn by my great name, said the Lord, that my name shall no more be named in the mouth of any man of Judah in all the land of Egypt, saying, The Lord God liveth. Yes, sir. Behold, I will watch over them for evil. And not for good. Wait a minute. He said he's going to watch over them for evil. So that means God looking at everything that we do. He's watching the choices that we make. He's a God of choices. He put them on the table. He's watching everything you do. Let me say, well, I ain't going to do this when I sent this up. So no, that angel sitting right there looking at everything you do and reporting to God. Amen. He don't sleep. He got eyes all around this earth. He in your bedroom. He on your cell phone when you're on the cell phone. He on your TV. He looking at TV just like you looking at TV. He looking in your mind. He's not like a man now. When he needs sleep, he 24 7 rolling. God and angels do not sleep. They work. Go ahead. 27. Behold, I will watch over them for evil and not for good. Mm -hmm. And all the men of Judah that are in the land of Egypt shall be consumed by the sword and by the famine until there be an end of them. See, the men started it. The men want to stop this. He could have saved his wife. He could have saved his children. They came in and destroyed them all. When the man go down, everything go down. A lot of stuff go down. If you ain't strong enough to handle your end, it will go down. And I'm not just talking about financial stuff. I'm talking about spiritual. You got to have a spiritual headship. If you ain't got that, go find your spiritual pastor headship. Somebody that in this word. See, a lot of people confuse that finance thing like we doing good. That ain't mean you doing good. Satan give you all of that. That's the counterfeit. You fall for it like a dummy every time. I fell for it. Just because I'm making more money, making this and that, that don't mean that I'm doing right. And I noticed when I was making money, I was paying it all to the wrong church. But God knew my heart, though. He knew I wanted to find the truth. And I found it. Go ahead. 28. Yet a small number that escaped the sword shall return out of the land of Egypt into the land of Judah. Yes, sir. And all the remnant of Judah that are, that are gone into the land of Egypt to sojourn there shall know whose words shall stand, mine or theirs. See, that's the choice. Mm -hmm. Believe me, God don't leave a remnant to go back and tell the story. Somebody gonna tell the story each generation. But are you listening? Are you really listening? That's what people gotta say. You gotta incline your ear, your mind to listen. Go ahead. 29. And this shall be a sign unto you, saith the Lord, that I will punish you in this place. 
that ye may know that my word shall surely stand against you for evil. So he's telling you now, he's making choice now. 